Uh, welcome to Tuesday, my friends. It is May 26th, and it is now the 2.30 PC group session. How y'all doing? Just great? Just great? Doing one person that's awake. I had to say just great. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, Mike. I was really excited there for yeah, a second look. that you were sitting next to your truck and had all the Purple shirt Tuesday, there. even I in like the house. I like it. Look at forgot. that. <laughs> Way to go, Bonnie. All right, so today we want to talk about what? What did we, talk, what did we say we we're going to work on today? Buyer agreement. Buyer and seller stuff and some of the documentation we're going to talk about, which is great because Nicole has a listing that is potential and they want to know the process. Great. And also those of us that are in the Bold Pivot course, they talk about the buyer and seller presentations that are where? Virtual. Virtual. Exactly. We don't have to do everything in, in person. And there are some really cool stuff set up already in designs that you can go in there and just edit, manipulate. That'll give you a good idea of what to use. And they're pretty cool looking solid. Could Which we, one of you? Could go ahead. we also like at the end part, like after we go through all that, kind of run through really quick, like on dot loop, how to add all those in there and stuff? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So I think the first thing we need to do is what are we going to start with buyers or sellers? Buyers. We'll start buyers. All right. Buyers it is. Who has a, who is confident in their buyer presentation and wants to run one through? I, 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 Ron. Hope. I don't know what's going on with your Wi-Fi, but I hear like every third word. It was like that this morning too. Oh, sorry. I'm pretty confident, but you could prove me otherwise. I'm not here to prove you otherwise. I'm here to help you grow. All right. You guys want to run through a, a Hope's buyer consultation? Who wants to be Hope's buyer? I will. Robin, it is. All right, Hope, agent, Robin, client, round one, fight. If you guys are having a hard time hearing me, then I don't, uh, I don't know. We can hear you now. Okay. Sounds like now, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if this is virtual or are we in the office, Dan? That's your call. How do you want to, how, do, how are you going to do it? How you practice this, how you participate? I'm, I'm not do used want, to a virtual. So. Okay. Do you guys want to use a visual? Is that, would that be helpful? You want me to run through one with a visual? Or yes. do you want to just go over what the elements of a buyer consultation needs to have? It's up to everybody else in a group. I think Can visual I would be nice. Okay. Look, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull up the basic that they have in command for the buyer consultation. Let me see if I can't just we're going to pull this all together. We're going to download it just so it looks like a PDF. I don't know why my screen is doing that. Standard download. Just do it. So I'm prepared. Just download it. Preparing your download. All right. So the first thing first is when you guys are having your buyer consultations, it's super important to be already set up and prepared for it. So if you have a three o'clock I don't want you pulling your buyer presentation together at 255. Mm -mm. We're not going to do what we're doing now because this is, you know, I wanted you guys to kind of play along in your own space. Wow, whatever that was is really loud. Okay, why are you only giving me through page five? All right, so we're gonna start here in the first. We're gonna do it through the command portal. So you guys can kind of see, we're gonna, one, I'm gonna show you the navigation, how to get there. And two, we're gonna just do a, a buyer presentation right off the cusp of what, what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna share my, my desktop to you so you guys can see it now. You should be able to see my Chrome, right? We're gonna close down some of these up here so y'all, we don't slow down the internet at all. First things first, how to get there, right? Tell me you see a blank screen. 
We see your templates. Okay, so in command, we're going to start all the way from agent.kw.com. You're going to log in with your credentials. Don't log in with mine. It's not going to be any good for you. Your information is here. So we're going to go right down here to designs. We're going to select it. It's going to populate as it so does. At the bottom right of the screen, you're going to select the plus button, which is going to new create design. All of our presentations are in print. So we're going to select print and then next. It's going to take us to the design agent where we're able to pick and choose designs, manipulate them, and make them work what we need to work on. It's already going right to the buyer presentation because that was the last thing that I selected and got out of it. So command's going to recognize that and, and map backwards to it. So if you see under your KW app listings buyer, you're actually going to find your listing presentation and your buyer presentations in both a dark and light format. Both of them essentially have the same information and knowledge involved in both of them. And it's going to be a very similar format. Just goes on the design that you want to use if that's either a light or a dark design. I personally happen to like the way that the dark one looked just because it's simpler. And I just think dark looks more modern. It's more sleek. It does take up a lot more ink. So I would be cautious on how much you print and do stuff like that. If you're going to do them digitally, you can turn it into a PDF presentation and you can go slide by slide which is pretty awesome. First thing first, you're gonna introduce yourself to your client and say, thank you so much for meeting with me, either if it's in person or over Zoom, because that right there is just gonna let them know that we do appreciate their time and they are giving value in that. They are allowing us to be part of their day. They are taking you know, time to come meet with us in person, do a Zoom call, whatever, what have you. And we just want to go over, this is your guide to homeowner. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I want to go over this with you. This is the guide to homeownership. And I want to let you guys know, first and foremost, everything you know need to know about home buying is in this packet. And if I go too fast, please do me a favor and be down. If I need to repeat any of the steps or if I need to go over something again, I will gladly do so. Can you guys still see it? I moved it from one screen to another. All right, can you see it now again? All right, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, are you ready to get going? Get agreement, move forward. I want, look, want you guys to know that this is a buyer consultation. What we're gonna do is you're actually gonna go through as a client, and it would, sorry, as an agent, you're gonna go through and fill this out and it's not gonna say, you know, just the generic text in here. So as, as a blank buyer consultation, you're going to see a lot of the, the text and I haven't changed because I just went and picked up one real quick. But I want you guys to use this format and go in there and edit your own. So back to back to your clients. Mr. Mrs. Buyer, as a buyer consultation, it's super important that I inform you on all the different avenues that's going to involved in buying your next house. Tell me now, what is your experience with home buying now? And then get their, your buy-in. What that's going to do is it's going to help you identify what do they know? Oh, tell me your experience. I need mean, give me a role player. Who who wants to be my role play partner on this one? I will. Still, Robin. Sure. All right, Miss Robin. Do me a favor. Would you explain to me all the the ins and outs that you already understand about the real estate process and buying a home? Well. I purchased a condo and I've purchased my house just a few years ago. Um, I know I need to be pre-qualified for a loan. And I know we're going to pick out the house that I want to get. And we're going to do inspections and make sure everything's up to par. Perfect. Well, that's good, Ms. Robin. It really does sound like you have a great foothold on the basic understanding of what's going to happen in this process. Not a whole lot has changed in the last couple of years since you bought your home. I'm just going to maximize the experience you have and make it the most refer referable experience possible. We're going to go through this, this booklet pretty quick. And like I said before, if I do go too quickly, please slow me down. I would love to, to double over things and make sure that you fully understand because this is about you having as much information as possible so you make the best informed decision that you can. We're gonna go through what your dream home looks like. And this is every aspect from the tile colors to the paper, you know, wallpaper, the, the shower, bathroom, anything like that, anything that you can think of in your dream home, I'd like to know about it so that it helps me best find a home for your needs. 
on your needs, we're gonna make sure we find a house that's suitable for your preferences, for your family's wants, likes, hobbies, any kind of different environments that you like to live in, backyard preferences, garages, or just carports, stuff like that. And I want you to start now thinking about your neighborhood. What does your dream neighborhood look like? What are the kind of things you wanna see around in your, in your neighbors, in your community, close proximity to shopping or mass transit? These are all things that are super important about the, where we find a house. Everybody's heard the, the term real estate's all about location, location, location. That's absolutely true. We wanna make sure that we find a location that's perfect for you. We're gonna go over the steps of buying. That's gonna be from right now, which I believe is step one is going over and, and one, selecting a realtor to work with. And by the end of this conversation, I believe that you and I should identify that if, that we're right for each other in this, in, in this transaction. And I'm here to support you in your buying needs. And if at any point you don't feel like I'm the right agent to service your needs to the best of my abilities, then please let me know. And if I feel like I'm not the best agent to support you, I'll let you know as well. Does that sound fair? That's fair. Perfect. Maybe continue. So I, I, always, I always want you guys to know that buying a house is a massive decision. It's not something that needs to be rushed. It's not something that should be taken lightly. It's quite possibly the largest financial decision you will ever make. And my job is to make sure that you have all the information so that you're making the best and most sound decision possible. I want you to start visualizing what your dream home looks like. How does that look for you? It's Are we light. looking in? Is it light? It's light and bright and has beautiful views and okay, I can go fantastic. walk and ride my bike. So we got something that's light, it's bright, got some beautiful views, a community where you feel safe enough to ride your bike, maybe some bike paths set up for you. Do you care to be close to home shopping centers or do you care to be out in the, like, the community far enough away? I'd rather be a bit away. I don't really like being close to shopping. Okay. Why is that important to you? It's more peaceful. Traffic. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So, sorry, David and a possible recruiter standing out in front of my office talking about us. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of things. So, it's, it's, it's super important for me to help find a house. And I'm going to start taking some notes if that's okay with you. We want to find a house that's light, breezy, area outside of town. You like the, the freedom. You want the peaceful stuff like that. Now, what's the one thing that has to happen to make this scenario come true for you? Um, I have to be able to sell my existing home. Okay. So realistically, we need to make sure that we are in a position that we know what you're looking for to have a house to move into. And we need to get your house ready to sell on the market and position to do so in a quick time manner. Yes. Okay. That's fantastic. Now, other than light, airy, breezy, with areas for riding your bicycle and a community that's a little bit further out there so you have a little bit more peace of mind and, and distance from the world, what's one more thing you would add to your house as a must have? Um, well, I want three bedrooms and two baths. So that's pretty important. Okay, what's important about a three bedroom? Um, I want my daughter to be able to come over and stay and have a guest bedroom as well. Okay. So it's important for you to have your space, for your daughter to have a space to come over and visit. How, how old's your daughter? 32. Well, oh, that's excellent. And where's she at now? New Hampshire. Oh, very cool. So she'd come out here for a different change of weather for sure. That's right. <laughs> and the guest bedroom. How often do you plan on having guests over? Um, not very often. I mean, a couple times a year. Okay, fantastic. Now, other than the three bedroom and two bath, is there anything else about the actual structure of the home that's super important to you? A uh, fenced in yard. You know, I like okay. to be able to spend time in the backyard. All right, absolutely. And a garage. Now, and a garage. Okay, what's important about the garage? I love my car and I don't want it outside. Okay, so a place to safely secure your vehicle outside of the elements, that's fantastic. You guys should be taking notes like, right? So we can 
call back all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, that's super great. Well, right now, finding a home has actually never been simpler. I'm, I'm going to share with you, if you don't mind, my mobile app. So we're, we can start working on that. It's going to give you up-to-date, in-the-moment information about what the market looks like in the areas that we're going to look for homes. Would you like me to email it to you or text it to you? Um, you can send that to my email. Okay, perfect. And then you, you're down here, you'll have it already kind of set up where you can just send it to them. And what this is pretty cool is it's going to give you in-the-moment access to me, even though I'm not there, of knowing what's going to happen next. So that's the guide to buying a home. It's going to walk you through the same steps that you and I are going to go through now. And if you're like a typical buyer, all this information is going to come in one ear, get jumbled around and pop out the other sometime. And you may forget a process step at in, in three o'clock in the morning. I want you to make sure that you have that information. So I'm going to put it in the guide for you so you can go step by step and knowing exactly where you're at in the process at all times. As well as we can search any neighborhood. You can search by school district. We can search by just a, a neighborhood in general. We can search in proximity. We can search by just about every characteristic that you can filter a home down to right at your fingertips. And you can do it from your couch. That's great. So it's pretty awesome. First thing we need to do is we need to build your home profile. So we need to kind of find out all the basics. We've, we've already kind of gone through the kind of house you're looking for. I want to find out about you. What's the best way for you and I to communicate? Um, via email, you can call me. I'm open. Okay, perfect. Do you mind if I text from time to time if it's super important information? Oh, no, that's fine. Oh, fantastic. And what number would you like me to text you? 4065937. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, what time of day is best for us to what's what time of day is best for us to communicate? Um after 4:30 is best. I can also do stuff at lunchtime. Okay, around when is lunch? One o'clock. Okay, perfect. Now, as things pop up, we talk about urgency and stuff like that. How soon do you want to know about a property or maybe some information that pops up? Would you like me to save that information for you until um, after work? Well, I mean, you could send it to me right away and then we could talk about it after work. That sounds great to me. So as we want, we're, we're going to go through your wish list here. We kind of already identified a lot of the things that are going to be super important in your home. Like we, we know that we need a house. It's going to be a three bedroom, two baths at a minimum. Are you open to a fourth bedroom? Um, sure. That, I mean, I guess more rather than less is fine. Okay. It's just perfect. Perfect. So three would be ideal. You're open to fourth, but just some people don't like that extra room if they don't have to have it. We've kind of already gone over what your top five non-negotiables would be. That'd be a safe community where you can ride a bike. Got to have a garage, got to have a three bedroom, two bath. We have to have a backyard and a fenced in. Now, if the yard isn't quite fenced in, are you willing to get that done after the fact? Sure. Okay, now for the house itself, do you want something that's move in ready or do you mind doing a little bit of work to make it your own? Um, I really would like move in ready. Okay, well, a lot of times in move in ready, I want to talk about that in, in a little bit more detail if that's okay with you. Some, some buyers, think of a house and move in ready as pristine and perfect. Would you say that you're one of those? Um, I like perfect. <laughs> the only reason I ask is I don't want to disappoint you and I want to make sure that I satisfy your needs the best I can. So if we're looking for something that's move in ready with little to no blemishes, it might behoove us to actually look at some new build opportunities in the new communities that are popping up so that you can get a house that's completely new and that everything would be of ideal point. The downside to that is usually those don't have as much inventory on the market and you're paying a premium. So I just want you to keep that in mind while we're looking. Now, other than what you've told me already in the house, what is something that you really want to have in your next home? I mean, it's just so important to me that it's sunny and bright and it feels warm. Like I do not like dark or gloom. I came from New Hampshire where it rains too much. I need to feel like I'm in a bright, sunny place. Okay. Would that make the house feel like home? Yes. Okay. When people come to visit your home, what do you want the house to say about you? 
Um, that's a tough one. Was that your cat? Yes. Uh, your cat's speaking up. So clearly we need a place for the kitties. This is true. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the fourth bedroom. The fourth bedroom, the, the cat room for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Now, is there a certain type of home that we're looking for? When I ask that, it, it means that it could be a single family home, which is a house that's typically built on its own piece of land, on its own, without houses attached to it. Are you open to a connected home or a town home? I'd really prefer a single family residence. Um, okay. I'd really like if the lot could back on common area. Um, I know those are harder to find. I don't, I'm not as fond of the interior lot. What's important about that? I love views. It's the pretty view. I want to see the mountains. I like open space. I want to see the desert. If there's any way it can back to common area, that makes it more desirable to me. Absolutely. Now, how big of a house are you looking for? About 1,500 square feet. Okay. What's important about that? Um... Big enough, but not too big. I mean, okay. paying taxes and. <laughs> Your cat is pissed off. <laughs> is that Misty, right? That's Misty. Yeah. Good memory. So. Now, when you look at the outside of the house, what do you see? Um. I mean, I like the Southwest style, Adobe. I do want a single story. I don't really want two stories. Okay, perfect. What about a hot tub or a swimming pool? Um, I have one now and it is a lot of work. If there was one in the community, that would probably be like top choice. Okay. Not opposed to having a pool, definitely would like to not have one. And if there's one accessible to you for the community, right? Right, that'd be ideal. Fantastic. And the inside of the house, guys, we're kind of, I am kind of zooming through this. I would definitely drill down a lot more to find out exactly on each, each point of these. As you can see, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm grouping a lot of them together. We've already, already talked about how many bedrooms, what are they gonna use for? I like to spend a lot of time on the next topic and you're gonna see why. All right, Robin, you kind of already told me what the house needs to look like. Three bedroom, two bath. It's important to have a space for your daughter to come visit you as well as having a space for the cats to go and play and maybe a fourth bedroom. If we can find something in that price range, it's gonna be open to that idea. Now, what's most important to a lot of people is the kitchen. Tell me about your dream kitchen. So I definitely like stainless steel appliances, um, a gas range just because it has, I feel like I have more control when I'm cooking. I like granite counters. What else? Um, when you stand at the sink, you need to be looking at something appealing. I don't want to stand at the sink and be doing dishes staring at the wall. Like I want it to be a window or be facing into the room or. Okay, perfect. What else? What else? I don't want it to be too cramped. I've had a little alley kitchen before. Um, The microwave up over, like not on the counter. I like open okay. counters. Perfect. Now notice when I asked her what else, she kept finding something and she lit up about the sink. She lit up about that aspect of the kitchen. She lit up, she positioned herself in that kitchen. And you can see it when you tapped into that emotional receptor where I was like, tell me about your kitchen. Not tell me about the kitchen or a kitchen. Mm. Tell me about your kitchen. Could you all visualize what her kitchen looked like? That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to set such an emotional anchor to things that we can negotiate past some of the small stuff. And it's usually the kitchen that does it. 
if you're talking about, if you're talking with a, a guy, what do we need to talk about? The garage. Barbecue and outside in the garage. Entertaining yeah, space, I mean. workspace. When it comes to a, a woman's in, intuition and being right about it all, you can damn well believe it's the bathrooms and kitchen that are sell that house. No woman in their right mind would have bought my house because the kitchen was garbage and the bathrooms were behind me. But I'm a guy and I don't care about those things. And I put a new kitchen in anyways. So let's, we're gonna zoom past that we talked about all the house stuff. We've gone through everything in the house, living room, the dining room, what the bathrooms look like, what the bedrooms look like, blah, 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 blah. Now the next big important thing on there is, all right, Ms. Robin, well, thank you so much for telling me about what your dream house looks like. I've got a lot of great information here that's gonna help me find the perfect home for you. Now I just wanna make sure I find it in the perfect location. When you think about your dream neighborhood, what do you see? Mountains. <laughs> okay. And families, and, you know, able to walk the dog after dinner. I like the west area and the northwest. Awesome. Awesome. Now, is it important for you? As I say, how far are you willing to drive to work? I'm willing to commute 45 minutes. Anything more than that's okay. too much. All right, let me verify I've got your work address, and that is? 201 North Stone Avenue. Okay, right Downtown there on the corner. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it is. Now, is there a certain school district you wanted to stay in? Um, my daughter's 32, so it does not matter. <laughs> it's all good. You never know. Now, what kind of activities do you like to do? I like to ride my bike and walk and swim. Um, I like to ride horses, but usually I drive to somewhere to go do that. <laughs> I don't want to have my own horse. Okay. Very cool. Any other considerations that I should be aware of while trying to find the perfect location for you? Uh -huh. Oh, why? I don't think so. Just I don't want to be on a busy road. I don't like a lot of road noise. You know, I want it to be quiet. Okay, perfect. So there's a couple of neighborhoods I have in mind. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to help you set up your app. And we're going to put some hot insights on those neighborhoods. So we're going to search in the area. So and we're going to actually put some searches in your app. So if you would download it. And we'll get you set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the neighborhoods I'm thinking about so you can get some insights on what the days on market is. It tells us how fast houses are selling, new listings in that area, some restaurants that other agents have, ate, have, have dined at and have some really good information on, and some other information that may not just be common Google knowledge. It's really cool stuff. That way, when we leave here, it gives you something to go, you know, toy around with and play. And I do it. Do advise that you drive through these neighborhoods and get it, an idea for the feel of them and the, the trip between here and work and just make sure that that works for you. Is that okay? That sounds great. Awesome. Now, let's talk about how buying works. When is the best time to buy? A lot of, a lot of people ask. And the only, the only right answer is when you find the home you love. So this is all about you. And I, I'm gonna try to keep my opinion out of as best I can, but as you can already tell, I'm very passionate about my clients and I wanna make sure that they have all the information. And part of that is my own opinion and my own professional in input on homes. If you absolutely love a house and I hate it, guess what? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> because my opinion is not gonna weigh in on this decision. I want you to be happy with the driveway that you own. But I want you to tell me if there's something I need to worry about. I will 100%, I guarantee you that. So this is how the home process works. We've kind of already identified one, that what the dream home and neighborhood look like, and we're gonna start there. So we're, we're, we're at step one, is finding getting part with an agent. Hopefully I'm the agent you select to work with you. And like I said, we're gonna go over that here at the end of things. I'm gonna make sure that you have all of my knowledge about local insights. We're gonna to get to know the neighborhoods, the inventory levels of those neighborhoods. What's on the market, gain access to off-market properties. I've got a huge network of Keller Williams agents that are constantly getting listings and stuff that are not even gonna hit the market because they sell so fast. You'll have that resource there to you as well. I'm gonna get you set up if you haven't done so already in talking to a lender to make sure that you have 
the financial abilities to qualify for the next house. Have you had a chance to talk to a bank yet? So I was playing with the app already and I did put in an application with Keller Mortgage. That's awesome. I think you're gonna like the way that they have a zero fee set up and they're very good, very good at what they do. So let's get past all that and going into the process of the fun stuff. And that's once we find a house that you love, we're gonna make an offer and negotiate the terms. Now, the first thing is we're gonna review the contract terms that are for it. And there's a lot of things that we can negotiate on the contract, not just the purchase price. We are gonna negotiate the purchase price, of course, based on what the market pricing of the house is. We're gonna be very aggressive because it is, it's a hot moving market. So we wanna make sure that your offer has the best chance of success. We're gonna select the right title company to make sure that you have all the support for you. I do work with some incredible people and if you'd like me to set them up for you, I will. We're also gonna make sure the timelines work for both you and the seller. So if we need a short closing, we can work that out in negotiations or we can do a long one. There are multiple things to negotiate the contract as well as closing costs in the event that you don't wanna put some of the cash to sell your house up, we can negotiate the seller to pay back some of that. I will tell you that in this price point, a lot of buyers on your property are gonna ask for some closing cost assistance and we can pass that along when we're buying the next house. I'm also gonna give you a resource, it's called Keller Covered, that you can shop for some homeowner's insurance and save you some money. And there's a big resource we have out there so you can actually utilize all the Keller Williams tools to your benefit. We're gonna sign the offer. We're gonna make sure that we have the earnest money together. Now, when you bought your house a couple years ago, did they explain to you the earnest money well enough? Um, it was just my deposit, right? Similar to that. The earnest money is, it is a deposit. What that is, that's a financial guarantee that we, as the buying side of the contract, are going to do what we're contractually obligated to do so in the times we're obligated to do it. And if we do everything we're supposed to do per the contract, you're entitled to get your earnest money back. And that can either be deposited towards the purchase of the house, like as an additional down payment, or refunded to you at the time of closing. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we get this contract written up and drawn, we're going to send it over, negotiate the terms back and forth. And the buyers, as the buyer side, we, we write the offer, we send it over. The, the seller's agent is going to let us know they received the contract, talk with their clients. And they have one of three options. They can accept their offer, which would be ideal. They can counter our offer, which means they like some of it, but some of the terms they'd like to change or be more beneficial. Or three, they can outright reject the offer, meaning they've probably got some better offers on the table or they're not even interested in entertaining our offer at all. I'll navigate each one of those for you. And once we get an offer accepted, that's when we go what we consider under contract. Once it's under contract, we need to make sure we deliver the earnest money to our title company so that we have our funds in place. They can open up the escrow which starts the process and all the title work. We're gonna send that information off to our lender so that he knows, they know that the bank is on point and gotta get the money in place. And we start doing our due diligence on the property. We have 10 days after the acceptance of the contract to do our inspections. And that's inspections for everything from the roof to the ground that you and I can't see when we first walk through the house. And those inspections are super important because they're gonna be looking for major concerns with the safety structural or mechanical items in the home that you and I can't see when we walk through the house ourselves. So what happens exactly. with the stuff that we see wrong when we walk through the house? Well, those are items that we're gonna negotiate right up front. Is if we can see that it's got a broken cabinet or there's a big crack in the wall, these are things that we're gonna write out front in our purchase offer say that we agree to buy the house at this price if this, this, and this are completed. Mm -hmm. So it's super important that we do identify any of these concerns up front because that's gonna help us determine what kind of offer we're gonna present. Great question. So in the process here, you can see there's a lot of steps to go through this. We're gonna walk through each one of these. So as the process comes along, our job is to do the due diligence on the house and that's gonna be you driving the neighborhood, checking out the utilities, making sure that you have everything possible in line, make sure you're okay with the drive home from work, you're okay with the neighbors. So I recommend that you drive these neighborhoods multiple times, like in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, so you know different driving patterns, different times of day. You could never spend too much time doing the research on the property you're gonna buy. Like I said, it is the largest financial decision you're probably gonna make. 
we want to make sure that we neutralize all those contingencies. And that means that we're going to have our title company do a complete review of the documents, make sure that we're good on everything. We're going to have the bank do a complete review on all the loan documents to make sure we're good on financing the house. And you and I are going to walk through the process of doing the inspections on the house. Typically, I'll see people doing a roof inspection, a general home inspection, and a pest inspection. If we do find a house in the pool, I do recommend that you do get a specialized inspection that the guy that company does just pools. Makes sense. Right? And then once we're getting through all that process, we're going to get to towards closing and the appraisal gets ordered. You will have to pay for the appraisal up front as well as the inspections. Those are items that are your investment to the process. And before we close, we have the need to make sure we have our funds in place. So we need to get the, a cashier's check for any down payment. Set up the moving company for the day that we plan on closing. That day might change a little bit towards the end of it and we've got to keep it a little fluid. In the coronavirus days, we, we are seeing a lot of adjustment in timeframes. And want to make sure you start your change of address with your bank, your utilities, and any other important documentation that is address sensitive that UPS won't just send your way. And you want to make sure you have electricity, water, gas, sewer, trash, all set up for the day that you move in. It's a any lot questions? of coordinating. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I'll be there every step of the way to make sure that you have all the guidance you need so that you're not lost along the way. Sounds good. I trust you will have questions. I have the answers. And if I don't have the answers, I know someone who does. Excellent. Where do I sign? <laughs> exactly. On closing day, I need to make sure you bring your driver's license, with you, a, a government state issued identification with your photo, your social security number, you may need the addresses for the last couple of years to confirm on some credit stuff. Your proof of homeowner's insurance, which usually gets sent over to the lender. We wanna make sure we have that just in case also. You'll have your checkbook and a copy of the contract just in case we need to review any of the terms. You and I will be doing that well before we get to the closing table. Once we sign all the documents at title, those documents go back to the lender. The lender goes through and makes sure they have everything they do. They finance the loan, which means they send the money to the title company. The title company is the disperser of all monies. Once the title company gets the money, the house has officially been paid for through your mortgage. They can record the title. At the point they record the title, that's legal transfer. That's when I can give you your keys. I will remind you again, come closing day, that that's going to happen. And I don't want you to be upset that we don't get keys the moment we close anymore. They change the process where as soon as it records, that's legal ownership. And I can, I'll meet you, give your keys. Keys and a high five. It sounds good to me, right? That sounds good. So, any questions so far about the process? No, it's a lot, but it sounds like if I have you help me, it'll all be under control. Yes, and I'm really glad that you've already started your, your application with Keller Mortgage. I know that you're going to enjoy working with them. They do make home loans simpler with their processes and the fact that they're zero fee, more, the zero plus loans. So you're going to get a great mortgage experience. It's exclusive to Keller Williams agents. So working with an agent like me gives you access to do that. You're going to eliminate the signing and lender fees, which you could save you thousands of dollars over a typical lender. Mm -hmm. Plus they're going to if, issue up to a thousand dollar credit for a third party fee. So that could be title fees. It could be any other random fee that gets associated to it. And some of the most aggressive rates in the market. So I, I know for a fact, you're going to love them. I've worked with them many times and they're pretty fantastic stuff. Thanks. On your guys' buyer consultation, make sure you fill this out with your information, please. Don't make the mistake of sending this lady's picture. <laughs> Looking at you, Mike. So, because the, the next little bit is, is all just about you guys. So we can kind of, we're gonna, this is where I just kind of, as a, I give them the packet, this is for them to look through when they go home, because they're inevitably going to look for stuff or it's an email. So you're going to have your bio, your information, your reviews, your promise to them. Like I, you can just click through this as they're talking. And then what I like to do with, is we talked about earlier, I will pull out the buyer broker at this point and have them sign. So this is all. Say that again. You would. So the buyer broker, yeah, so the buyer broker agreement, 
I use on all my transactions. At this point, I will zoom to the bottom of this because if we're if they're working with Keller Mortgage, they need to sign an affiliated business arrangement, which you need to go through and change this on your guys' stuff because Keller Williams and Keller Mortgage are two different companies. We have a financial interest in it. And as a representative of Keller Williams, we need to identify that we have an affiliated business arrangement, just like we have to fill out the affiliated business disclosure for title security. We need to do that for Keller Mortgage. So if we're using the slide in our presentation for Keller Mortgage, we have to have this affiliated business disclosure in there. On top of that, I will have in this packet already my buyer broker agreement. So Ms. Robin, thank you so much for spending some time with me. I, I hope that we covered all the questions you had. I'm sure in the future, there's gonna be a couple of things that pop up. So on your drive home or when you get home tonight, anything else lingering up there, just jot it down and give me a call tomorrow or, we, or send me a text later if you're thinking about it so I can help identify or help answer any of those questions that pop up for you. Now what we're gonna do now, this is my business disclosure for our Keller Mortgage. We are a, a, an owner, it's, we, are a, we have a financial interest in the company since we're a different organization than Keller Realty. So if you would please sign right here, just acknowledging that you understand that we're in affiliation with them. Okay. Sign, sign, sign. Now next is the buyer broker agreement. And that is just you are hiring me as your agent or representative to help you on this process. Say no. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, Ms. Robin, what makes you say that? Um, well, I don't know what I'm agreeing to. Well, that's great. Let's, we can walk through this. This is just an agreement between you and I that you're hiring my brokerage, Keller Williams, Southern Arizona, to represent you in the buying side of your purchase. The selling side is a completely different agreement. We're going to go over that here next. But this is just lines out that, and you go over the different clauses and terms. All right. Would you please sign here? Say no. No. No, I'm just not comfortable. I completely understand that, Ms. Robin. And, and being a little apprehensive to sign something is completely normal. Remember the beginning of the conversation, how we said that at, at any point you felt like I was not the agent to represent you in the highest and best form that you would let me know? Yes. Okay. Well, feel like I am the best agent to represent your needs. Do you? I do, but this says it's good for a year. So well, it doesn't have to be good for a year. At, at any point, I'm not servicing the you at the highest and best of your needs would you please let me know and if this and if it's not working for you then we'll just rip up this agreement and cancel it oh okay i have i haven't had a bad experience yet and i don't plan on starting with you that sounds fair would you sign right here certainly okay all right off script back to back to the conversation Notice how I set up the buyer broker at the very beginning. I reiterated it halfway through. And then when it came time to sign the agreement, we had an anchor. I've heard a lot of agents saying I have a hard time getting the buyer broker signed. It's because you're pulling it out like surprise. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Not at all. So, Let's set it up there first. So the script on that's very easy. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I'm going to go over the entire process of buying a, your next home. And at any time during the process that you feel like I'm not the right agent to service your needs, would you let me know? And in the same token, at the same time, I feel like I'm not the best agent to service your needs. I'll let you know. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. And at the end of this, we're going to decide if we're going to work together or not. Mm -hmm it sets it up so that you guys can have that conversation at the tail end sign right here no well we already talked about this earlier that we would identify if we're going to work together or not now you're challenging their integrity well you said but it's the biggest thing it's just putting it back up we had discussed that we are going to do this and we're going to we're going to talk about you know, working together, get it all identified. And if at any time during this entire process, you feel like I'm not the right agent for you, would you let me know? Because if you're not, if, 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 if you and I have a fundamental disagreement and we're not going to work together, it's not going to be a good experience. And as an agent, if I feel like you're, you're going to try to look for a house that's outside my expertise, outside my wheelhouse, it's going to be a terrible experience. I need to get you where it's the best suited for you. So 
if you want to go buy a house that's farmland out in Cochise County on the backside of a mountain and you want, you know, ag share and oil rights and all this, I don't know. Am I the best agent to service their needs? Can I fumble through it and figure it out? Yeah. Is that servicing clients the best? No. What you need to do is partner with somebody say, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, I'm still going to walk you through the rest of this program. But I feel like it's best that if I get you turned over to somebody who specializes in land, agriculture, oil rights, all these things, and I'll partner with them if that's okay with you. How many times did I say, is that okay with you? Let them feel like they're in charge of the conversation and walk them through. Any takeaways, any ahas? I apologize, a little choppy. That's my first time going through that entire thing. I noticed in the, um, as we talked about this morning, in the, the whole way this buyer consultation is set up, it's with open-ended questions as well. Throughout. Yes. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. You can literally just read off each bullet point if you want. What's so important I'm, about that? What's important about the size of the house? What do you want to see in your neighborhood? What's the outside look like? These are all, they're all listed out there so you can see that. So I was on the phone when you started this. And so I came in kind of after you'd already started. Um, is this something that, that's a template? Yes. And where did we go? In designs. Oh, in command? Yeah, so command, designs, new, click on print, under buyers. The listing templates in there, we don't have time to do a whole listing presentation. We'll do that one next. Hey, Dan. Um, I want to Yes, ma'am. Um, on your, your buyer presentation, you have a few extra, uh, I guess, like slides or, or printout, whatever, like for pricing, for pricing, like inspections and stuff like that. Right. You said, yeah, once you said that you were going to uh, send that to us so that we can have it on hand, is that still possible? I, I sent everyone the buyer consultation. You did? I guess I'll go back and check and see. Okay, I'll send it again. I sent it to I was gonna say, he sent already. it to me this morning. I can send it if you need me to. Okay, okay thanks. Was I seeing a screenshot or something? Okay. Um, sent it. Yeah, all, all that was was yeah. All that was was the buyer buyer consultation you can get out of um, Michael Lewis Marketing Suite before Command even had one is what I built mine off of, and in that I have this page and this is what she's talking about. So screen share, I want to share my screen, share. This is what she's talking about. This is the home buying process lined out. Like the one in command gives a lot more bullet points for each step of the contract, which I like. I think better. you're on the wrong screen. Oh, where's it at? Where's, I didn't see what she <laughs> That could have been really embarrassing if I didn't know what I was sharing. <laughs> where's your calendar? Is it now? Do you see it now? Yes. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So this is this is the buyer presentation that I use. It's a lot more simple, and I'm gonna I'm going to retool the command one to to fit some of this stuff in here. And this is where I go. It's a single page line item that I use. Like we went through the bullet points of the different process. You know, the pre pre offer, during the offer, during the inspections, after offer, closing day. Always make the the three things you need to hit on every time is the inspections what you're looking for what are we looking for control. Major, yeah safety structural and mechanical stuff major concerns with safety structural and mechanical things that we could yeah. not see during our walkthrough and i, I want to point that out because if you guys walk through and you can see there's a giant freaking crack down the ceiling Put it in the offer. Get it done up front. Don't just be like, you know, we'll get it in the, the negotiation with the Binzer. The Binzer is not for negotiations. The Binzer is to help correct things that you cannot see at your first walkthrough. True or false? Our contracts are as is. True. True. Thank you, Mary. You guys need to know that. You're buying the house as is. The seller is not obligated to fix anything. And it's the biggest headache I have. And I, I keep getting 15, 17, 20 page bins requests and just ridiculous. But like she was talking about is down here. 
I put here, I don't go over, oops, I broke it. I don't go over what the prices are. I just put it there as something they can review. Home inspections are typically between three and $500. Pest inspections anywhere from 50 to $100. Pool inspections are 150 to $200. The roof inspections anywhere from 75 to $100 and others as needed. That's just for that litten out. Dan, I think probably should add in like appraisals as well. I don't put the appraisal on here because depending on the loan type, the appraisal is more. Okay. And that's, and that's something that the lender talks to them about. I just let them know up front, like we talked about during the, the walkthrough with Robin, that you're going to have to pay for your appraisal okay. with, your, with your lender. And the lender aligns that out. It could be a $495, $595, $695. Okay. Hey, Dan. If you're, doing, if you're doing a cash deal completely different, you can, you can shop the appraisal at that point. Yes, Hope. I was just going to say, I believe roof inspections are mostly free with as many contractors as need work here. Correction. That's an estimate, not an inspection. Oh, yes, you're right. The only other thing I'd add to this is be sure to ask for the referrals somewhere in there. Ask for referrals. It's, a, it's at the end. Okay. So. so what's the difference between an estimate and an inspection? An I mean, estimate, they're going out looking for work. And it's free. An inspection, they're going out looking for issues and it costs you. So that'll be said because what I'll do is I'll send out three different companies, three different roofing companies to give me bids on the house. I've been doing this long enough. I can look up on a roof and say, okay, I see some broken tiles. I see some alligatoring on the white. I, I see that the shingles look like they're destroyed. I think it's best that we get a roofing company out here to look at this house. I send roofers on every offer. My, my process is line out the contract, get everything over to my title company, send the address to my roofing inspectors, all three of them. Like I switch out, I have three, I switch out the companies from time to time and say, hey, I need, a, I need a bid on this house. And they go out there and they bid the house. If you get two that say that needs a new roof and a third one says, hey, it just needs this to be patched. Maybe with the two. Yeah, you're gonna, you have some different options. If all three of it says it needs a new roof and they're within hundreds of dollars of each other, you know that it's, it's legit. If you see two that need, okay, it needs like $1,200 worth of work, it needs this, this, and this done. And then the third guy's like $11,000, brand new roof. Present that information to your buyers, but you wanna present it with, we sent out some roofers to give us a bid, which means they went looking for work. So how do you approach that with them then? Just like that. I'm glad you said that, Dan, because I do the same thing. And I had one bid for $300 and another for 11000 So that's very important to get one or two. Now get three. Three. I'll start get getting three. three. If you have anyone doing bid work, get multiple bids so you can compare them against each other. But you want to get most. And how I present that, Miss Mary, is I talk about the home inspection is super important. I have some home inspectors that I use on a regular basis and I do trust. If you would like, I can send you their information or I can set up the home, appraise, the home inspection for you. But as a buyer, it is 100% your responsibility to hire your inspector so that you can get that taken care of. I'm just here to help you find the resource. Now, when it comes to your inspectors, I use this guy, this guy, this, this guy, they're all awesome. This is the one I use most often for my pest inspector, I only use this guy because he's been blah, blah, blah. Now for the roof, it's super important that we have the roof looked at. And instead of paying the $75 for an inspection, a little trick is I actually send out the, the roofers to give us a bid. Now keep in mind, they're going out looking for things to do, looking for work to do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the average of the three of those bids and come back and we'll have a better idea what the house looks like. So it even, do you use an inspector that does roof too though or yeah. not okay every every home inspector will pop up there and say you need to bring in a roofer oh okay because the inspection that i sat through last week he actually did the inspection on the roof yeah uh, who's the inspector ah uh, i'd have to look i don't have that name offhand what do you look uh, like huh is he a short little dude or a tall no. skinny guy okay. he was taller young fairly young um and then what if 
I mean, this might not be common, but like our HOA does a roof inspection every year. So do you get those if? Whatever, whatever, what, whatever information you can get will only benefit your buyer. So I'm saying that if they've already had a roof inspection done by the HO or the HOA, whoever they hire, do you still have them get another one? It's 100% up to the buyers. Okay. I always, and I do say always recommend that whatever information we get, they still get their own. Well, I've had, I've had three houses that were bought because the seller gave the buyer the inspection report on the contract that fell through. It made me feel very uncomfortable. Because one, I wasn't there in the inspection. Two, I wasn't able to vet the inspector. And three, I don't know if he just picked the inspection that looked the best. It was Chad Casper with pillar to post. You just said he's, he's six foot five. How is he just a little tall? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I said he was tall. He's yeah. tall. <laughs> the, the termite guy that they, that they brought in was really, really short though. So. <laughs> Chad Casper's six five. He's taller than me. Okay. But he, <laughs> but he did, he looked at the roof and stuff. So even yeah. like. There, there are some inspection companies out there like pillar to post. Chad can even do pool inspections. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He's certified to do pool inspections. Okay. Yeah. Cause he told me that he did everything except termites. And I think that I'm actually sitting through another one that I think that he's doing again this week. So yeah. So a lot of those companies will do that. I like to bring in specialists. Okay. A home inspector may look at a hundred different roofs. A roofer has torn apart thousands. Okay. It's the same thing as going to a physical, you know, a, a, a general practice doctor and a specified doctor, but they're both doctors both can do the job one has just taken it apart and put it back together a bunch so great question i would definitely recommend y'all in interview your inspectors have a couple of them in the pipeline don't just choose one that's also why i know chad casper very well like that's yeah i, I interviewed i talked to i find out and i even know what kind of inspector is going to work for which client for me as a, as a buyer, I don't want the super tech nerdy guy that tells me everything. I want to do the run through the house, point out the stuff I need to worry about, tell me how it needs to get resolved and so I can make a decision if I'm willing to do that work or if I want the seller to do that work. Some, yeah, that's, some kind clients, of what he, that's kind of what he did because I told him when I went in there, I was like, I haven't sat through him before and the buyers weren't there. And so when he, he went and he did all of his stuff and then he's like, do you want me to tell you like, what's this, what's that, et cetera, et cetera even though I'm not the listing agent on it. So it was actually really helpful to sit through one just to know what to expect. So I would, I would sit through more of them. You're going to learn so much about houses. Yeah. Just by going through well, yeah. Stuff. Another agent has offered to compensate me for that. So, and, and especially, especially if, if the inspector is willing to talk about resolution. Yeah. Cause there's some inspectors out there. They're really good at pointing out stuff, but have no idea how to fix it. Yeah. And that was kind of the thing with like, he's like the, air, the AC is running fine. He's like, but it's 20 years old. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's like, kind Chad, a, Chad like is a, actually on inspection. I'm going to tell them, but are they going to change it? It's up to them. So. Yeah. And the thing is I've, I've even had home inspectors call out some stuff. that's super dumb. Like there's an antenna on a, a ceiling fan and Chad called it out. I'm like, Chad, that's an antenna. He's all, it says it's got power through it. No, it's an antenna. Like you've seen a hundred of them, but they just, whatever he calls out and just, and people panic about stupid stuff. So that's why I advise that the buyers go on the inspections. I do. So they can be there firsthand. Uh -huh. um, I hate having to be the, the mediator where you're like, this is what they said. This is what can happen. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get yourself sued. So keep yourself out of that situation. Don't say, Oh, it's not a big issue always talk about well this is how it can be resolved and it's not not terribly difficult would you like me to ask the seller to do it or do you want to risk the contract over this it's always the buyer's decision if they want you to ask for 900 things on the benzer you got to do it you can tell them this is probably not going to fly and then actually have a random question in regards to inspections how often is the radon re like actually recommended and done radon radon yeah zero percent 
two he reasons. Said that a lot of buyers have been asking for it lately, and he doesn't. We're, we're getting we're getting a lot of buyers from the East Coast. Oh, uh, okay. And we don't have basements. We yeah. don't have stale we had air. We actually like ran out of radon kits. So yeah, and we have and and we always have our windows and doors open. Do you guys know what radon is? It's a gas. Yeah, radon. Radon is a gas that comes from the earth from decaying material, and it's a heavy gas, so it actually sits underneath the air and pushes through. It'll suffocate you with high radon buildup. It's easily taken care of with a vent. Back east or homes that have, I was going to say back east, Colorado has them too. Places where basements are common, you'll see basements with vents in them or like a fan or something like that. So it circulates the air out of the basement. And that's a radon gas vent because they build up in space like that. Here in Tucson or in Arizona, we don't have the basements. We don't have the, the closed windows all, all winter. We always have our windows open and fresh air coming through and out. So it really does help. So, all right, now real quick, we're going to run long, but Nicole asked that we see how to put everything into dot loop. Am I correct? Yes, please. All right. All right. This is, this is a whole class in itself, but we'll do one quickly. All right. Thank you. All right. Try to find the right picture. All right, you guys seeing dot loop? Yes. Your dot loops probably look like this. Mine looks like this because I see a lot of things. Now, super easy to start with your dot loop. Apologize, I'm not going to look at the camera at all. I'm just going to look at my screen. So we're going to add a loop. We're going to do, where's my dad's address? Pan and feather drive. Wait for, see how it had a delay? Click on the one that pops up so it'll give you the correct information. We get to select what kind of loop it is. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to create the template in there for you. Which one would you like to see, Miss Nicole? Uh, listing residential. All right, perfect. Listing residential TAR, because we don't have the, AA, the uh, armless one in there. So this is Tucson Association of Realtors. You can upload a photo if you'd like to. You don't have to. Click done. And what that does is it creates the loop. Right here we have the loop. From here you can click on status, pre-listing, private listing, blah, blah, blah. It's pre-listing. Enter the price. We're going to list it for $280,000. Closing date, we don't know because it's a new listing. So now we're going to view the loop. This brings us into the loop itself. Right away you can see at the top, It'll give you the address. All your loops should be named by the address. Makes it easier. You'll see your listing documents folder. And in that residential profile sheet, this is the order I like to have it in. But we're actually missing the listing agreement. It fell out. So we need to add a listing agreement. We'll show you how to add a document that's perfect. So if they're gray, it's just a placeholder. It just lets you know that you need to have that in your file. The MLS printout is just the agent printout on the MLS document. Are you doing this through command or? No, this is dot loop. Oh, okay. Just right now we're still doing dot loop for our, okay. our compliance. I will reteach command once we start transitioning, but that date got killed. We were supposed to go into command this month, but that got killed because of coronavirus. I don't think mine shows the KW thing at the top of my dot loop. This here? Yeah. Huh. Mine know. does. I, I looked at it today and it was there. I just wasn't sure I was putting the right stuff in there. So I was like, oh, I'm going to ask. <laughs> Renee, make sure you, you're going through mykw.kw.com and clicking on the box up top that says create or start transaction. Oh, okay. That's probably why. So, so right here. Okay. It takes you into that portal. Oh, okay. I just had it like bookmarked on dot loop. So that makes sense. Yeah, and it'll do that, so. Okay, thank you. So we can go through, and you can see residential profile sheet, HOA addendum, if they have one, lead-based paint disclosure, if it has one. What kind of houses need lead-based paint disclosure? 1978. Built prior to 1978. Good job, guys. Hey, quick question on that, Dan. Um, yes, ma'am. My spire 
he initialed on the wrong one, like the wrong thing that said it was after 1978 when the house is actually 19, before 1978. Do I just have him initial and? You can do that or you can send an addendum that just corrects it. Okay. Because you need to make sure that you select the information that's on, on the uh, lead-based paint disclosure area too. And, and I said all of that, like he has a copy of all the lead, he has all that right information. We just initialed in the wrong place. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the one thing you can do is he can, because the document's already been signed by the seller. Right. Then you need to do an addendum. Okay. Yeah, because you can't, once it's been executed, right. you can't manipulate it. So okay. If it's a, if it's a, like a date change at the top or something like that, or on a signature line, Nothing, nothing that's part of the contract, and that's actually part of the contract. Okay, thanks. So. And then how would I get rid of that since it's 1999? On, on the right here? It's a great yeah. question. Click, archive. Okay. So the little three dots. If okay. you don't need it, archive it. Okay. Like the property verification worksheet, you guys should be doing for your own homework. It's only going to help you figure out everything about the house a lot easier. Status form report, status report form is for price changes and such like that. But the rest of these are part of your listing packet. We're just, we're actually listing, we're missing the listing and we're missing the SPDS. So we can add a document from templates. I like to go all the way down to the bottom, Arizona Association, right here. Oh, they changed it, Melissa. So we're gonna look for seller Listing agreement. Copy of association documents. We're going to go into. Yeah. Why did you move it from me, guys? <laughs> Residential sale. I gotta find out where they took it to because you need the SPDS in there. You you just had it. It was at the beginning of that. That's a placeholder. It was gray. Oh, it was. Yeah. Which would oh? Why are you are you in the buyer folder? Yeah, because it used to be in there. We had it stuck in there because in the event that you had to send it. So I was just kind of, I was seeing if it was still there so we could add it to the loop. I gotta find out why it's not in there. Have add it back in. Sometimes I just keep it in my own folder so I can find it because I can't find it sometimes. <laughs> right. I use transaction desk for most of my forms just to, to be completely transparent because I have templates set up. But for dot loop, this is this is how you start your document. So make sure it's all filled out. You need to add the people to your contracts. So you need to add who? The sellers. You. You. Me. Yeah. And add me. I'm just in there to help you all out. So all you got to do is add a person. You guys seem to be pretty confident in doing so. Just select the role. So. so what do we put you as admin? Admin, please. So should I add you to the ones that I have right now? If they're closed, no. If they're open, yes. All right. Does that help you out a little bit, Nicole? Yes. So and it's then super, it's super high line. Now, one thing I will tell you guys is see how there's a listing documents folder. This is where the listing stuff goes. So once you get the seller's property disclosure filled out and they sign it, put it in here. You need the seller also to get the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The letter of experience, which also known as the clue report for the insurance company needs to go in here. Any of their payoff and stuff like that, you can create another folder, which is just listing this documents. You want to keep them separated so that the, the brokers are able to review your files easier. And once you get an offer that you accept, you're going to add a folder and you're going to make it. Contract documents. Contract documents. I just put buyer folder. So I know I've got a listing folder and a buyer folder. Okay. And then how do I send all those documents? So I get them all 
filled out and everything, how do I send them to be signed? Okay, so when you're in there, you're gonna go in, you got your people, you've, you've put like this, you actually have to fill out. Mm -hmm. It's easier It's easier to print out a DocuSign, print it and fill it out and scan it back up. And you're gonna add signature of your initials, assign them to, it'll give you one of the names of the people you've put up there. And then save and share. Okay. And will that just say um, share the one document or will it, can I combine them so that it just, sends all of them? It'll just do the one or okay. you can do, what you can do is you can actually go in there and fill out all the documents you want, like make sure they're all filled out, everything mm -hmm. is in there, every, all the signature blocks are done, everything is correct and just select the documents you want to share and then share them all at the same time. Okay, okay. That's after you save them, right? Yes, you have to save them. It doesn't auto save. Okay. And then, super important, as soon as you have a signed agreement, that could be the buyer broker agreement, a listing agreement, or a agreed upon purchase contract, it needs to get submitted over to the broker within 72 hours. Okay. So what you do is you click on the, the top box for the folder, up here, submit for review. It's going to bring up a dialogue. You're going, okay. I'm going to. I'm submitting the listing documents folder because it's a listing. You put in there new listing for review, whatever you need to put in there, and hit submit. Okay. So that has to be done within 72 hours of a purchase contract. Within 72 hours of an agreed upon contract. Okay. A buyer broker, a listing agreement, a referral agreement, a, a listing contract, or a, a purchase contract that it was accepted. Make sure you name your documents, the document name, then the address. When you're a buyer and you're looking for houses, do you just name it by their name? Yes. And then once you land on a, a house, you can go in and change the name. So I had a buyer and we found a place we put an offer on it, but it wasn't accepted. So then I just changed it back to their name because I changed yeah. it to the address and then I created and put a separate folder, offer rejected and kind of just, then I'll create a new folder for whenever they get theirs. Yeah. So just keep yourself organized the best you can within dot loop. Like here's a good example. This house of mine and, and Sarita has been under contract four different times. And I've had to cancel the listing. I've had, this is the, the buyer folder that just recently got canceled. Is that the small house or a big house? Small house. Like the town home, like the doll houses? Yeah. Okay. I used to live in the next neighborhood. That's yeah, 192,000. Was it 1600 square foot? Okay. So, but yeah, you see how my naming conventions I, I always put the X in front of it, lets me know they're fully ac executed versus the ones down here like X, XB, XS, which tells me the buyer signed, just the seller signed. And once it's fully signed, then I rename it. So Keep X yourself. means the buyer signed it? X? And you're waiting like, for yeah, yeah, right here, X means fully executed. If it's XS, I know that the seller has signed. If it's XB, I know the buyer has signed. It's so are you naming on those or they are the only no. ones you needed to sign? No, these were, these were documents that were uploaded waiting for to be signed or uh -huh. I, was, I was waiting for a counter offer to be signed. And once I got the counter signed, I renamed it and, and archived the old one. That's how it's grayed out, it's archived. So if I hide the archive, it goes away. Oh. So the, the brokers know that I've replaced that document and I renamed it to prep the prop the prep uh, the proper way that I name things. And I keep them in order. So my purchase contract, the HOA, the solar, the and they all go together because they came in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then the SPDS, then my counters, counter one, counter two. 
and I've even had I've even had deals that have even more than that. So it's it's all in how you. Oh God, I got so many of these things. So Dan, after we get the buyer broker agreement signed, we have seventy two hours to get it over to the broker. Yes. Including like the. Um, wire fraud notice, stuff like that, that we initially give everybody and the affiliated business, all those if, initial buyer yeah, forms, if, we send them all over. If you have the buyer broker signed. Okay. Yeah, the, the buyer broker is the agreement. Everything okay. else is as a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Support. As a what? Support document. So boy, that's a good, that's a good term, support document. It, not, the word is, it's an advisory. It's just a, you telling them this is a problem. This could be an issue. That's them acknowledging that you talked to them about it. Like the real estate election and disclosure is just a disclosure notice. It's not an agreement. The buyer broker is an agreement because you sign it, they sign it. Like a referral is an agreement because you sign it, they sign it. Okay. Listing, you sign it, they sign it. Purchase contract, they sign it, they sign it. Make sense? Gotcha. Yes. Anything that's an agreement, a contract needs to be submitted. All right, tons of information today. I saw Tess put in the chat that it was extremely full of ahas for her. I was not monitoring the chat at all, guys. Sorry. Dot Loop does have a ton of virtual trainings. They're extremely helpful. Thank you for that, Laura. All right. Any other questions while I got you guys on the line? Any lingering questions for the buyer presentation? When you do that, do you, um, how do you do that? Do you print those and show it to them or do you do it? How do you do those when you're with them? Typically I'll do a, a presentation. I turn it into a PowerPoint presentation or I do a PDF document, make it the whole screen, just go page by page. I see what you did there with the lingering questions. <laughs> I'm just trying to instill the things I teach. <laughs> so if I'm, if I'm meeting somebody, I will print them out. If I'm meeting them, I'll print them out. But if they're coming here to the office, I try to do a presentation because we're a tech company, which should be technical. So yes, Ms. Teresa. Um, these, some of these like, the uh, buyer broker or whatever, if you're, if you're making the buyer presentation, you said you have your buyer broker in that. So do you save the buyer broker presentation as a PDF file and then combine it all later? Or how do you, is that how you do it? Yeah, if it's in the PDF, I'll have it as the last page of the PDF and I will have a physical copy there to sign. Okay. okay. Yeah, that way, that way I have it in the presentation. It's up on the screen, they see it, and then I slide one over to them to sign. So do you have it pre-filled out then? No, it doesn't take long to fill out. I mean, if you know, if you know the correct spelling of the name and everything like that, you can fill out their information. You can fill out everything you want to on it. But mine, mine literally just has a, the, my name, the broker's name. So yeah, I have that stuff filled out because it's just, it never changes. Yeah. Okay. But like they're like the client name. It's so quick to put in. Templates. Transaction templates. Do you do wet signatures then in, in person or? Yes. One quick question about our row. If, because when I did my first sale, um, I was not incorporated, but I am incorporated now. So do I put my incorporation name? I just put my name. Like this is this is my form right here. Because okay. you're an office representative, right, Teresa? So yes. Yeah. Name. Okay. Good. So I can just keep my name. Good. Okay. To piggyback on that, so if so, if a seller has an LLC, do you have them sign like custodian of the LLC or just their name? Depends on the the setup they have with. Like if they're the president, uh -huh. if, if they're going to sign a listing document, I just have to sign their name. But when they go to title, they'll need to sign their name for the company name. 
okay. or their their name comma title. Okay. It, and title will tell you how they need to sign. Okay. Yeah. I just need to list your like, trusts. Right. Right. Yeah. Why do you but, charge an additional four ninety five? Because I do. Oh, okay. Just curious. No, I just I was just typing in there to see if you guys would catch on that. <laughs> this is this is what's important. This so is at the beginning it's of your next, business. Whenever they said that um what was it, 125 on our I forgot what that was for. Would that be where we add that? The like changing? The, yeah, the transaction one. Notice what I'm doing? I'm not changing this at all. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the agreement that right there the amount of the compensation shall be three percent of the sale price plus two ninety five. That as a on a buyer presentation or a buyer deal, tell them it's being sold from the buyer side. Like that's it will go on the settlement statement as a buyer cost, and if they have closing cost assistance, it gets paid out of the closing cost. Do we also put gross sales price? If you want. I don't know if it's a this is a resale contract, everything's gross. You you actually sign you sign a completely different document for buyer broker agreements on new builds. Which is the net purchase price. So awesome. Right. So that, that that right there we talk about is training you guys how to sell the buyer broker. I just put it on there. The amount of my compensation is three percent of the sell price plus the admin fee. My admin fee is two ninety five, or four ninety five, depending on what area I'm in. If I'm if I'm supporting a buyer out in Sarita, guess what my admin fee is? Four ninety five. Why is that? Because it's Very mileage. Gas. You're more than welcome to send them my way. I'm happy to help them. <laughs> I would like to hear that. Okay, I got some takers. I got some takers. <laughs> and I I hope you guys know that I don't take buyers all that much. So how do you sell the admin fee? How do I sell the admin fee? I don't. I tell it. Okay. You know what's really good about that, Dan? Um, and I, I can't remember who chimed in. Mary? Um, long and, well, we shouldn't talk about other brokerages, but other brokerages cause, charge a retainer fee. And what I like to say is we don't charge a retainer fee. Um, you know, so that's one way to do it. Most uh, charge about seven ninety five just to sit down with people. So the biggest thing, like to answer your question, Mary, is how do I, how do I sell? The, yeah, like, I mean, I, mean people, I don't, I don't sell it. I just say it. I always see it on those as, well, what's this compensation for? And so that's without anything additional. So. Yeah, the 3% compensation. People always like, what's the compensation about? Well, the good thing is the compensation is usually paid from the seller side. So Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, that's not something you need to concern yourself with. My pay is 3% of the sales price plus 295, which is my admin fee on top of that. Now, in the event that the seller is not going to cover that entirety, you and I can discuss that. I'm never going to put my buyer at risk. This is a standard form. What I do for one, I do for all. So a lot of uh, like buyer specialists advertise themselves as free for buyers. Can you, you probably can't say that if you add that in though, can you? I don't advertise myself as free for buyers. No, I'm just, no, I'm just asking in general though. <laughs> is that your fee or is that business fee? If you put the 125, that's just the cost of the company. The cost of the what? The company, your transaction fee. That's not, like, only your, service, your services are free. It doesn't cost you a red cent to sit down and talk to me about talking in homes. Your future doesn't cost you a penny. It only hurts when you when you park there. So if, if you guys need to adopt that 125 at least to cover the transaction fee. I have written a lot of contracts and I have yet to have anyone bark at that because it's the expectation of my service. It's not like, well, you know, I mean, it's 3%, but we can do some work. No, it's my compensation is very matter of fact. I get 3% of the sell price plus 295. Sign right up. 
Have you ever had any sellers not want to pay the extra fee? It doesn't go to the seller. It goes on the settlement statement. Settlement statement. Okay. Uh, sellers never see it. Okay. But I constantly see settlement statements where my compensation is higher than the other agents and it makes me laugh. Okay. All right. So what you got up there, Miss? Huh? I saw you thinking. I was like, what you got up there? I know. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think then. So how does it get to the contract then? It doesn't go on the purchase contract. It goes nowhere other than this agreement and this agreement gets sent to title and it goes on your DA. Oh. Okay. On your distribution, you have to add this in as a bonus on your DAs. And I'll show you how to do that too. Just, I can't right now with a live contract. Next time you guys have one, I'll show you where to put it on your DAs. Okay. And it just goes on a separate line item so that when it goes, when the DA, the distribution authorization goes to title, they know how much needs to go on the settlement statement. Okay. You think you, you think you can help influx your business a little bit, a couple hundred bucks for every deal, right? You're paying 125 per transaction come next year. You're paying for the gas. You're paying for your supplies. You're paying for your continuing education. It's all, it's all part of the administration of your business. Hmm. Is that 295 additional commission? Absolutely. Why am I charging it? Offsetting your marketing, your gas, all your stuff. It offsets my administration fees. Got you it. can't. So it's plus 295. Let's just put this. Just 3% of the sale price plus 295. I've also seen people put on there that it's the um, commit compensation shall be the MLS agreement or the. Uh, listed cooperation split plus so whatever it is an MLS plus 295 I put 3% because I've had two and a half percent buyer sides that I got paid 3% on and MLS said two and a half percent but we also got four percent closing costs so it didn't cost my buyer anything it's just looking after your own business guys like we talk about having the 7% listings, 8% listings, ask for it. If you get three 7% listings, it's like getting a fourth listing for free. Only happens if you ask. How'd it feel to ask, Laura? Did it, were you scared? I made Jason do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no way <laughs> they're going to say yes. And he totally did. And they didn't even balk, did they? They're like, okay. Yeah. Is that a three split then or a 3.5 split? No, three, four split. There's an agent in my office that is three, five splits. 8% listings. Wow. She gets paid 5% on everything she sells. And she does a lot of business. Grow your business to the point where you don't have to worry about asking for an 8% listing. I would love to see all of you start getting more and more listings and more and more business and then having this, <laughs> this, this buildup. So that's where it starts. And I, I, you, you're all so far ahead of where you were six months ago. Do you agree? I'm so far ahead of where I was two months ago when I just started so, with you guys. So I've been doing this for two years and just started this and finally learning stuff. <laughs> it's weird how that works, huh? Get a coach. I'll change your life. Yay, coach. <laughs> so start, start bringing more people into the fold. Tell their agents you're working about. I, I need you guys to be some lead generators for me. Go out there and find me some people to bring into the program. They could be inside Keller Williams. They could be inside of the brokerages. Let's, let's bring them in the fold. It's only going to help us out. So awesome, guys. It's 4 o'clock. We ran late. But I think we needed to catch up on the week. It's Tuesday. So let's make something with the rest of your weeks. Let's go do something great. Your homework until next Monday when I, when I see most of you, we'll talk to you on Thursday about it, but your homework is to have a buyer and a seller presentation downloaded that you have customized. Cool. Okay. You, can either do it, you can do it from command or you can do it from Michael Lewis marketing, but you have to have one downloaded and done. When you have it done, email it to me. Okay. Cool. Thank you.
Awesome, guys. Talk to you soon. Where's the other place you said we can download it from? My, Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. Michael Lewis? Yeah, Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. Okay. Not to be confused with Michael Whining Marketing Suite. <laughs> he's, make, he's making some pretty badass open house signs, and I'm super jealous. Me too. I, I, I'm gonna, I didn't make them for myself. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, good deal. Thanks Thank again, you. guys. Appreciate your Thank time. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Dan.